What if I told you that one of the most powerful figures in Byzantine history wasn't an emperor, but a woman? Elia Pulcheria defied every expectation of her time, rising to a position of unmatched influence in a male-dominated empire. Born into one of the most turbulent periods of Byzantine history, she carved a path for herself with intelligence, strategy, and unwavering faith, leaving an indelible mark on both politics and religion. At just 15 years old, Pulcheria took on an extraordinary role, regent for her younger brother, Emperor Theodosius II. But Pulcheria wasn't content to simply guide from the shadows. She made a bold declaration, proclaiming herself Augusta, an official title of authority. With this, she claimed powers few women of her era had ever dared to wield. It became a mission to reshape Byzantine society in line with her devout Christian values, solidify the empire's stability, and protect her family's throne from a sea of political intrigue. But how did she manage to command respect and authority at such a young age? What strategies allowed her to navigate an empire fraught with danger, opposition, and ever-changing alliances? And perhaps most fascinating of all, what enduring legacy did Pulcheria leave behind that echoes through the centuries and continues to inspire? In this video, we'll uncover the life of Elia Pulcheria, a woman whose determination and vision were defined leadership in her time. From her formative years in the Byzantine court to her pivotal role in shaping religious doctrine and political stability, Pulcheria's story is one of courage, conviction, and resilience. Ilya Pulcheria was born in 399 CE into the illustrious but complex Theodosian dynasty. Her father, Emperor Arcadius, ruled the Byzantine Empire during a period marked by political intrigue and religious upheaval. As the elder daughter of the imperial family, Pulcheria was surrounded by grandeur, but also by immense pressure. From a young age, she displayed exceptional intelligence and a precocious understanding of the court's dynamic. Her upbringing within the rigid structures of the Byzantine court equipped her with the tools to navigate a world where alliances were fragile, power was often a fleeting illusion. Pulcheria's life took a dramatic turn in 408 CE, when her father passed away unexpectedly. Her younger brother, Theodosius II, ascended the throne at just seven years old, leaving the empire in a precarious position. With a child emperor at the helm, the Byzantine court became a hotbed of rival factions, each vying for control. It was during this uncertain period that Pulcheria's brilliance began to shine. Despite her youth, she understood the delicate balance required to maintain power and protect the throne from opportunistic forces. At the age of 15, Pulcheria made it a bold and unprecedented move. She declared herself regent, assuming control over the empire's governance on behalf of her brother. But she didn't stop there. Pulcheria took the title of Augusta, an honorific traditionally reserved for the empress. This was no ceremonial role. As Augusta, she wielded real power, overseeing foreign policy, military matters, and religious affairs. Her strategic mind and steadfast nature quickly won the respect of court officials, who saw her as a beacon of stability in turbulent times. Pulcheria's early leadership was defined by her ability to outmaneuver opponents who underestimated her due to her youth and gender. Her vow of chastity, a deeply personal yet politically astute decision, helped solidify her authority. By pledging herself to a life of celibacy, she framed her rule as one of dedication to the faith and empire, not personal ambition. This vow also ensured that she would not be seen as a potential pawn in dynastic marriage plots, a common threat for royal women of the era. It also allowed her to consolidate power without the risk of external influence from an ambitious husband or rival faction. Under her regency, Pulcheria fostered an environment of strict discipline and devout Christian values within the imperial court. She was deeply influenced by her fate, and her commitment to Christianity would shape her policies and priorities. Pulcheria's vision for the empire extended far beyond mere governance. She sought to align the Byzantine state with the religious ideals she held dear. Her regency not only stabilized the empire politically, but also helped embed Christian orthodoxy as a cornerstone of Byzantine identity. Pulcheria's leadership during her brother's early reign set the stage for a period of relative stability. She played a key role in navigating the challenges posed by external threats, such as the Huns and the Sassanid Empire as well as internal struggles, including court conspiracies. Her ability to command respect, even among seasoned generals and bureaucrats, was a testament to her remarkable acumen and her ability to maintain unity within the empire. This formative period in Pulcheria's life 
not only established her reputation as a formidable leader, but also laid the groundwork for the empire's political and religious trajectory. It was during these years that Pulcheria's unique blend of piety, strategy, and resolve began to define her legacy. Her influence would echo far beyond her regency, shaping the Byzantine Empire for decades to come. Unlike many rulers who used religion as a tool for political convenience, Pulcheria's commitment was deeply personal and genuine. From a young age, she demonstrated a profound sense of piety, often engaging in acts of charity, promoting Christian values, and aligning the Byzantine state with the ideals of the burgeoning Christian church. One of her most defining religious actions was her vow of chastity. This vow was not only a personal commitment, but also a public declaration of her dedication to both God and the empire. By choosing a celibate life, Pulcheria positioned herself as a figure above the political maneuvering of marriage alliances, which were often fraught with conflict and power struggles. This choice elevated her moral standing in the eyes of her subjects and further solidified her image as a righteous and selfless leader. Pulcheria's influence extended far beyond personal piety. She actively promoted Christianity throughout the empire, supporting the construction of churches, monasteries, and shrines. Among her most notable contributions was her support for the Council of Esophis in 431 CE, which affirmed the Virgin Mary's title as Theotokos, or God-bearer. This decision was not only a theological milestone, but also a political one, strengthening the unity of the Christian church under Byzantine leadership. Her dedication to orthodoxy was evident in her efforts to combat heresy. Pulcheria worked tirelessly to suppress movements that threatened the unity of the church, such as Nestorianism, which questioned the divine and human natures of Christ. By aligning herself with the church leadership and doctrines, she became a pivotal figure in shaping the empire's religious identity. In addition to her theological contributions, Pulcheria influenced Byzantine court culture in profound ways. Under her leadership, the imperial court adopted a more austere and disciplined ethos, reflecting her religious convictions. Lavish excesses were curtailed, and the court became a center of moral and spiritual example for the empire. Pulcheria's strict adherence to Christian principles helped redefine the expectation of leadership, emphasizing humility, discipline, and service over opulence and extravagance. Pulcheria's reforms also had a tangible impact on Byzantine society. She championed the rights of the poor and marginalized, providing aid through charitable initiatives and advocating for policies that supported the vulnerable. Her efforts to integrate Christian values into governance transformed the empire by making it a model of religious piety and social responsibility. By weaving faith into the fabric of state policy, Pulcheria left an enduring legacy that would influence Byzantine culture for generations. But Pulcheria's religious initiatives are not without controversy. Her staunch orthodoxy occasionally alienated factions within the empire, particularly those with differing theological views. Despite this, her ability to maintain unity within the church and the state highlighted her exceptional diplomatic skills and strategic thinking. Her vision for a Christian empire was as much about consolidation of power as it was about spiritual harmony. Pulcheria's role as a political figure was as complex as it was groundbreaking. As Augusta and regent, she wielded immense influence in the Byzantine Empire, a feat that defied the societal norms of her time. Women, particularly those of noble lineage, were often relegated to ceremonial roles or expected to operate from behind the scenes. Pulcheria, however, shattered these expectations, stepping into the spotlight and becoming a master strategist in her own right. Her early years as regent demonstrated her extraordinary political instincts. Faced with a court rife with factional rivalries, Pulcheria implemented measures to consolidate her brother Theodosius II's authority while maintaining her own position. She deftly managed the Byzantine court's power dynamics, maintaining the loyalty of military leaders and key officials. Pulcheria's ability to command respect from seasoned generals, many of whom initially doubted her, underscored her exceptional leadership skills. These alliances were crucial in safeguarding the empire against both internal conspiracies and external threats. Pulcheria's diplomatic talents shown during her negotiations with foreign powers the most. One of the most notable examples was her involvement in the Byzantine response to the Huns, led by the infamous Attila. While Theodosius II's reign was marked by a mix of diplomacy and appeasement with the Huns, Pulcheria's strategic vision helped steer the empire through this challenging period. By securing temporary peace agreements and using tribute payments strategically, she bought the empire the time it needed to strengthen its defenses. 
Polcheria understood the delicate balance between confrontation and diplomacy, an insight that preserved the empire's stability during a time of great danger. Her contributions weren't limited to foreign policy. Polcheria also played a vital role in shaping domestic governance. She implemented reforms at the imperial court, emphasizing discipline and accountability. This approach not only curbed the excesses of court officials, but also enhanced the empire's administrative efficiency. Her leadership ensured that the Byzantine state could withstand the myriad challenges of the era, from economic pressures to military incursions. One of Polcheria's most significant political achievements came in 450 CE, when Theodosius II died suddenly after a riding accident. The question of succession was a potentially explosive issue, with various factions vying for control. Polcheria recognized the urgency of stabilizing the throne and acted decisively. She orchestrated the elevation of Marcin, a seasoned military official, as a new emperor. Polcheria married Marcian in a symbolic union to legitimize his rule, though she maintained her vow of chastity. This bold move not only secured the empire's continuity, but also reinforced Polcheria's authority as a guiding force in Byzantine politics. Under Marcian's rule, Polcheria continued to exercise significant influence, shaping key policies and ensuring that her vision for the empire endured. Together, they ushered in a period of relative prosperity and reform. Polcheria's emphasis on Christian values permeated the administration, further integrating faith into the fabric of the Byzantine state. Her efforts to prioritize justice and fairness in governance won her widespread respect among her contemporaries, both within and beyond the court. Despite her many successes, Polcheria's leadership was not without challenges. As a woman in a position of power, she faced criticism and resistance from those who questioned her authority. Some court officials viewed her influence as overreach, and there were persistent attempts to undermine her position. Polcheria's political legacy is one of enduring impact. She redefined the role of women in leadership, proving that intellect, strategy, and determination could rival and even surpass traditional notions of power. Her ability to navigate the complexities of Byzantine politics with grace and authority left a mark on the empire. By blending pragmatism with piety, Polcheri demonstrated the effective governance required both strength and compassion, setting a standard for leadership that would inspire generations. Polcheri's political vision extended beyond her lifetime. By ensuring the stability of the Byzantine Empire during a critical juncture, she helped lay the foundations for future prosperity. Her role in shaping the empire's political and cultural trajectory solidified her place among history's most extraordinary leaders, proving that the measure of a ruler lies not in the title, but in their ability to lead with wisdom and purpose. In the centuries following her death, Polcheria's influence continues to be felt. She is venerated as a saint in the Eastern Orthodox Church in recognition of her contributions to Christianity and her role as a moral and spiritual leader. Her life became a symbol of faith, resilience, and the power of vision in shaping history. Polcheria's story was not just one of personal triumph, but also a testament to the enduring impact of leadership grounded in conviction and purpose. Her charitable initiatives and emphasis on moral leadership created a blueprint for governance that balanced power with compassion. And by taking on the role of Augusta, she paved the way for future female leaders to challenge societal norms and assert their influence in a male-dominated world. As we reflect on her story, Polcheria's legacy invites us to consider how determination and purpose can shape the course of history. She proved that leadership is not about titles or circumstances. It is about the courage to act and the resolve to create lasting change. If you enjoyed this video on Elia Polcheria's life and legacy, don't forget to like this video, share it with fellow history enthusiasts, and subscribe to our channel for more stories of extraordinary figures who shaped the world and other things in history that you might find interesting. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep uncovering the past to inspire the present. Thank you.